Tonight, an active phase is anticipated across the Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Dr. Weather Bulletin for August 6. So, it says no tropical cyclones are active there, but uh, don't be fooled, there is quite a lot of activity bubbling under the hood right now, with 41 storms so far this year having formed, we're in code blue for more than one area of interest across mainly the Pacific, but elsewhere too, for instance, a 10% that we've marked now in the Atlantic, area of interest that we've been monitoring that could form near the Cape Verde Islands in the next five days. That's on day 67 of hurricane season. Long range model support from more than one model there. On day 84 of the Eastern Pacific, we've marked three systems. A 90% chance for that area of interest that's really looking decent now in the Eastern Pacific of Mexico, moving towards the Northwest. 50% in the Central Pacific, could it be? And in the easternmost part there, a 10% for next week. And here a 40% chance in the Western Pacific for an area of interest moving off the Philippines. It appears as though it will get absorbed by the next low pressure system, which will have a higher chance of becoming that tropical cyclone. And in the Indian Ocean, we're keeping a low chance of formation there for the Bay of Bengal. Uh, model trending maybe slightly away from formation now due to its moving further north over India, uh, but we'll keep tabs on it there with that area of interest. Well then, we've had a nice good look there across the world. Here's what the uh, current satellite imagery is looking like right now, and it's still a generally dry and subdued picture across the Atlantic, although quite a bit of convection bubbling up around uh, the Western uh, Caribbean and a few little locations in the Gulf, uh, but generally a quiet picture. The Eastern Pacific is, uh, well, the main feature there obviously is the area of interest that we've marked with a high chance. The other ones haven't really come up onto the radar yet. They're future systems, uh, but generally the Eastern Pacific looking pretty drab, although you can see the intertropical convergence zone there will probably give a helping hand. Looking at uh, this first system in particular, the 90% area marked by ourselves in the National Hurricane Center. NHC <coughs> currently going with 80% in the next 48 hours and that 90% being the next five days. ASCAP Pass from earlier showed some decent rotation and decent wind speeds in there as well, up to 35 miles per hour, although a big gap still towards the southwestern side is preventing it from having a proper center of circulation and therefore tropical cyclone status. That's really what we're waiting for. Um, convection's good. Um, its overall appearance is pretty decent. Uh, we're just waiting for a center of circulation to become more apparent. There's still some work to do on that front, but it will happen pretty soon, I'm sure. Western Pacific right now, you can see how this is looking, uh, that disturbance uh, bulging into the uh, South China Sea. Also a decent looking um, wave or two there in the uh, deep tropics, but generally Western Pacific remains fairly quiet. A few disturbances rattling around, but nothing likely to become anything. And in the Indian Ocean, uh, you can see how this is looking, monsoonal patterns dominating there. Uh, in the South Indian Ocean, extremely quiet now, after the uh, somewhat of a surprise 1S. Um, and down to the Australian region, a fairly quiet picture there as well, a couple of frontal systems moving through the higher latitudes across uh, southern Australia and New Zealand uh, but generally things are looking very quiet here. Now then let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures and you can see that 90% that we've marked on the screen there showing it where exactly where it is. Sea surface temperatures underneath it around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, maybe a pocket of 30 in one or two areas there. Off Florida, the uh, Gulf Coast, uh, very warm sea surface temperatures over 30 degrees and a few 30 degree isotherms now extending over part of the Bahamas and 28 degrees extending widely further up towards the north including in Chesapeake Bay. So that's uh, a quite a large area there, 28 degrees in the Western Atlantic. 
looking at the Indian Ocean, very warm waters in the north there in the Bay of Bengal, uh, over 30 degrees Celsius, Western Pacific, South China Sea there, that 40% over just about 30 degree temperatures waters and is heading higher temperatures as it approaches um, Hainan and into the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, but elsewhere in the Western Pacific, still pretty warm there and warming further. You see up the Chinese coast there, eastern coast of China, warm temperatures all the way up to the top there uh, in the East China Sea. Way above average, as you can see on this uh, anomaly map, Western Pacific as a whole is way above average. Uh, that massive La Nina effect in the Central Pacific, you could call it a Madoki La Nina as a matter of fact. And in the eastern Pacific there, slightly above average now, and the Atlantic is around slightly above average there as well. Uh, once again, looking at the Atlantic, those hot spots uh, for potential big developments, um, but at the moment, no storms are getting anywhere near that. Eastern Pacific building up just a little bit more off the coast of Mexico has reached the peak season there. The Western Pacific uh, is looking, of course, very decent. Um, oceanic heat content not quite as high along the Chinese coast as you'd probably expect. So let's check those computer models and there's quite a lot to get through tonight. First of all the Atlantic and you can see what happens next week. Let's see a potential formation date here. 9th of August I think that might be for that potential system forming there and just uh, moving on out to sea. Um, so that's towards the end of the forecast period. The 9th is probably a bit generous actually and becoming a uh, brief, not brief actually, just at the end there, a tropical storm for a little while. And then looking at the Eastern Pacific and it's all uh, gone messed up for me here so I'm not able to see any of the output. Uh, but you will see at least one tropical cyclone and probably two or three maybe and watch out that Central Pacific as well. You can see they're quite clearly a tropical cyclone forming. And that would mean Hone time if that happens. Um, a couple of models on board with that. It's a pretty close one to call. That's why we're giving it a 50-50 shot. And in the Western Pacific, um, you'll first see this system simmer out, the current one, and then uh, really some of its energy will get warped into all of this massive area of interest that becomes a very sloppy tropical cyclone in that five-day period and strikes the coast of China. Unfortunately, these ones, uh, if that was to materialize, a very large area of winds, quite a low air pressure. I imagine it'd be quite a bit of a rainmaker as well. So that could be a weak, but potentially uh, difficult storm. And check the Indian Ocean, uh, something rather similar actually, a massive wind profile there. Doesn't look like it closes itself off before landfall in India though, although models suggest otherwise in terms of the uh, isobars at least. Uh, but after it moves inland, GFS suggesting that it will deliver massive amounts of rainfall that we're about to check out in a moment. Uh, so if that does happen, even if it doesn't become a tropical cyclone, there could be a potential for really substantial rainfall totals. Here's a look at the whole area from uh, India to Indochina and you can see everything that's going on with those two different systems. You can see that one plowing through India there and the southern coast of China all getting massive amounts of rain there. Those red areas um, I think are 10 inches and the pink areas are 16 inches and more. You can see some isolated locations there, I think in Burma, of 32 inches and a little 30 inch there in Western India. So extremely <coughs> high amounts potentially, if that's a worst case. Longer range then, we're looking at the uh, Atlantic here, day 5 to 10, and you can see this storm gets uh, a decent spurt on and approaches hurricane status and then uh, starts to deteriorate as it approaches the... Uh, Windward, uh, sorry, the Leeward Islands and then towards just north of Puerto Rico and then uh, it would appear that it really starts to struggle by that point which reminds me of quite a few storms in the earlier part of the 2010s actually and in the uh, eastern Pacific you can see those two storms once again a hurricane out of the upcoming one in the eastern Pacific and then another one forming behind it eventually there you can see becoming a mature tropical storm by day 10 and possibly that other area of interest as well uh, which is to the southeast of Hawaii uh, so a lot happening in that picture there in the eastern Pacific 
um, which is really trying to uh, rack up the points against its uh, its predictions of a quiet season. Western Pacific uh, in the longer range suggesting towards the end of the day 10 uh, another almost repeat system after the first one that we'll see by day 5. Uh, so that's something else to watch out for there. Uh, but <clears throat> I wouldn't have too much faith in this kind of scenario, uh, given it's a GFS and the area concern. Difficult area to forecast. Well, at this point, that's all the main stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and check out the Force 13 store where you can request your very own animations along with our well-known uh, collection of merch products including the still waiting for Hone t-shirt which may be becoming an endangered species. Well then let's take a look at the silly range. First of all very impressive enormous low pressure system in the subtropical to extratropical Atlantic. Uh, what's left <coughs> excuse me, of this system across the central Atlantic uh, really dies off very quickly by the time it approaches the Bahamas and off towards the uh, the Gulf Stream and behind that there's really nothing to talk about in the Atlantic so it would appear that this subdued start across the Atlantic Basin is set to continue with this model taking us all the way out to the 21st of August there with only one more storm to this year's name. Eastern Pacific however you can see once again those two systems that's a continuation of what we saw previously oh look there's another hurricane probably now let's see if there's another storm that forms behind that and continues that trail even more. Well, there might just be something there forming on the intropical convergence zone, but I don't think that's going to be a tropical cyclone. Uh, let's not forget, this is extremely long range, um, but you would expect climatologically that the eastern Pacific starts to calm down uh, by the time we enter the middle of August, certainly. Western Pacific, another system forms on the long range GFS over northern Luzon in the Philippines and then takes a jaunt towards the north past the western coast of Taiwan, can't stress how rare that is, and into the coast of China with a potential other system forming in the Songda style it would appear as it heads towards Japan. But that once again is extremely long range, I wouldn't read it very much into all of this at all. Well, we made it through all of that on this day then in 2018. I'm sure most of you will have been there to remember that. Hector was peaking as a strong Category 4. John and Ileana were also active in the Eastern Pacific and 13E was about to become Christy. And Shan Shan was a Category 1 typhoon out to sea in the Western Pacific. But it was headed towards the Japanese islands and it would eventually get there. I think it was still uh, threatening those areas as a typhoon before starting to weaken. <clears throat> well, let's take a look at what's coming up next. I know it's been a while since I was last here at the desk. So let's remind ourselves the next name on the Atlantic naming list is still Danielle. In the Eastern Pacific, we've now got Howard up next. In the Central Pacific, we're still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, our next name is Mulan, uh, after somehow we had Songda and Trassis. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on the list there is Citrang. Well, in the Southern Hemisphere, 1S didn't get a name in the end, so we're still waiting for Ashley there in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Darian in the Australian region, and Harley in the South Pacific. That's all for tonight. We'll have another tropical weather <coughs> bulletin tomorrow night. Oh my lord. Have a good night. <laughs>